Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, if you haven't checked out Teddy's work, he writes the Tiger Forex Report every Monday, available under the newsletter tab at TFNN. It also comes with a 60-minute webinar. If you have time during the holidays, folks, check it out. Forex driving so much of this market, man. Uh, and we'll jump into it. Teddy Kegstad, Merry Christmas, man. Happy holidays. How are we doing? Uh, we're doing great. So I've got a bunch of 2023 predictions for all the of your, uh, viewers out there. Um, some are going to be really happy, especially your gold people. And some people are going to probably be seeing their breakfast for the second time today after I'm done. So, so <laughs> the I'm truth read hurts sometimes, man. But you know what they yeah. say? Ignorance is bliss, not in the markets, mm -hmm. man. So let's hear it. Where do you want to okay. start off? Okay, I'm going to be reading this, but I'm going to start off with gold right it. off the bat. Gold, All right, perfect. gold will rally, okay, driven by f fear of currency debasement and also counterparty market risk that's very bullish for gold in 2023. Gold mining stocks should do even better, okay? So that's my stand on gold. Stocks, okay. the super cycle is over. <clears throat> currency weakness will slam corporate America, okay? Misallocation of money because of inflation and COVID mandates will crush businesses. Indebted companies will go bust, and the general public, when it's all done, will be like the 1930s all over. And if you mention the stock market, they're probably going to take a swing at you. Okay? So now we're going to get to interest rates and bonds. Central banks do not control the markets, they influence them. And it's going to become very clear in the next year. Triple threat risk to capital, higher rates, currency risk, and default risk are going to be the major issues with the bond market in 2023. So that's going to be very, it's going to cause a lot of volatility for other markets as well. All right, <clears throat> revaluations of bonds falling below triple B. That means funds will be selling it and dumping it like garbage. Okay, most investors are aware that bond funds or any mutual fund that has any type of bonds. Once they get to triple B, they have to dump them. Okay, so that's going to be a big deal as so many co corporate bonds get rated down to triple B next year. If you did not sell bonds yesterday, which was the best time actually over a year ago and any time since today, um, today or tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow it's going to be worse than today. So for 2023, bonds will not be a buy. You know, eventually they will be, but for the next year, forget about it. All right, currencies are all in trouble. Okay, if you want to own any currencies, buy gold or buy the U.S. dollar Swiss or the Swiss versus many other currencies. That's going to be probably the big winner in 2023. The rest will not be. Okay, if it is over, okay, and it's going to be something this year, 2023. But most others are, are excuse me, cryptos. It's this is what's going to happen with Bitcoin and the industry the, the way I see it. If these other scenarios are true, this is the year for crypto and Bitcoin. Okay, if it's ever going to become something, it has to prove itself in 2023. Okay, and it's probably the one that will, but the rest not so much. Okay, most of them are scams. It's all going to come to light. There's going to be a lot of upheaval in the crypto industry over 2023. But Bitcoin, if it's ever going to be that glorious thing that becomes what they always said it would be, this is going to be the year. Okay, so we'll see how that pans out with them. Now we get to real estate because this all ties in with currencies and bonds. If the average guy can't buy property, then he can't sell it either. Buyers need financing, okay? So real estate is something you need to own, to live in, and to build on for manufacturing for companies. However, real estate has become a speculative vehicle over the last two decades especially, and it's totally leveraged by debt. That becomes a problem as the debt market sees up. It's gonna definitely have an impact on real estate. Now we get to oil. All right, global demand will most likely slow down as economies slow down. So that means that oil would probably be suppressed or stay pretty stable. However, we have the counter issue, okay? The Green New Deals will make it hard, harder for oil to be retrieved in the oil services industry to, to work with the product itself. So that means that we could have a very big issue with oil going higher in 2023. And overall for energies, Oil, coal, natural gas, and uranium are all going higher, and the companies that service these products are also going higher. Okay, so these are definitely stocks. There's always a winner somewhere, and there's always a loser somewhere. So if you if these predictions are right, 
you know those industries are where you want to jump into and all the rest, I hate to say it, are very, very, are in a lot of trouble. I mean, look at the thing companies like Tesla and um, Spotify and a bunch of other companies that have gotten whacked over the past, like especially a few months to the year, you know? So that's the, the tip of the iceberg, I think, going into 2023. And there you have Daddy. it. I appreciate it, man. Folks, you got to check out the Tiger Forex Report. That's such a great summary. And you can see, folks, how Teddy goes much deeper than just Forex. And Forex is just driving so much of the action, which is pretty cool, Teddy, in terms of how it all ties in. Uh, there's so many comments I was thinking about as you went through that. I'm going to try and jump through them in a second. But just talking about, you know, the decimation that could happen in some of these stocks, I think a lot of people forget. You know, Teddy, how far we have come, man. Now, now I pull up like a monthly, monthly, and I try and just add some context of things, right? And I say to people, folks, when President Trump was elected, that was November of 2016. Is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. The S and P was at 2,200. And remember, Teddy, no matter what you think about politics, people were pretty happy about what the economy was doing um, in the year 2016, right? You just traded in the S and P's from mm -hmm. 600 and change to 2,200. We're still at <clears> 3,900. You know, point being of some context of how far the market has gone over that time. Mm -hmm. You just went from 600 and change to 4,800 and change. Doesn't mean the world is over. If you get some type of pullback far off where we are, right. some stocks like Tesla, um, as you said, boy, that that is quite a lesson um, among many others, right? I mean, good stocks that are making money. Zoom, Zoom was making money. And somehow that mm -hmm. stock got up to almost 500 bucks and now it's at $65. That's not even the, the mm -hmm. story of like the dot-com bubble burst. Uh, right. Jumping back to the currencies real quick, though, because you pointed out the Swiss franc. So, yeah. so for those that have not heard it, Teddy, when you're talking about the, the dollar or the Swiss, why did you pick that currency out in particular? If you go over, because I pulled up a chart as you said it, and it looks like it could have some room as it's sitting at about 92 right now, right? And many times when we were first starting to talk to you years ago, you had parity, and you were just at parity in November before this thing sold off. If you could go into that, if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely. Uh, my biggest thing with the Swiss is that if you look at, see most people look, especially if you look at the modern era, people look only at the last decade or two for all their numbers and trying to predict where we're going. I look at, the, look at history, I go way, way back, and you gotta realize that the Swiss franc has been basically in a bull market for the last almost what is it it's a hundred and was it hundred and seventy years yeah since 1850 oh, since basically the Civil War the Swiss franc has rallied versus almost every currency overall since then okay so it's if it's if it's down against any of those currencies right now that's just a correction in the super cycle of things okay and that's okay. the one thing I have to say is that um, if I'm right about these predictions um, and we are heading to where these markets do have such an upheaval. Um, the Swiss is a flight to quality currency. So that nice. means that will be something where that will hold up versus so many other currencies. And especially if the dollar, which is a flight to quality, falls apart. Well, where are you going to? Gold nice. and Swiss. Can you hang with us for one more segment, Teddy? Sure. Okay, sure. we're going to come back, folks. We're going to finish the conversation up. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. We got the markets with some volatility. Three days left until 2023. Teddy and I will be right back. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P up by five points right now. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. And folks, if you have a chance, please sign up for the Tiger Forex Report. You head over to the newsletter tab. It's $97. You get it for a month. You also gain access to Forex Strategies and Fundamentals. It's a 60-minute webinar Teddy did for his subscribers. What is behind the Tiger Forex Report newsletter? You have some time over the holidays. Check it out. You get the newsletter for 30 days. You don't like it. You cancel it. You get a money-back guarantee. You can't go wrong, folks. Teddy, I'm going to jump to Bitcoin, all right, because you're talking about sure. Bitcoin. I was talking about Bitcoin at the beginning of the program, uh, pretty remarkable how well it's actually held up. And maybe that's part of the reason is what you're talking about. What mm -hmm. do you think of Bitcoin? Because I said, you know, how does Bitcoin trade down, Teddy, for basically two days, November 8th and November 9th with the implosion of FTX? And then that's it. We never make it below about 15,000. We're trading at 16,700. Uh, it seems like with everything going on, you would have seen more acceleration to lower prices from 20000 to about 16500 right now. Uh, what's your general take on Bitcoin and where you think it might head if you're talking about next year could be uh, kind of a reckoning if everything plays out like you were thinking? 
Okay, well, like I said, next year, I think, is the true test. I mean, we know that Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies are not a hedge against inflation. However, they may be a store of value. And if that's the case, this is where we'll find out. Now, you got to realize with FTX and all this implosion, the current cryptocurrency market is in for a rough ride in 2023. But it's yeah. also exposing the realities that, you know, I've been saying this for the past couple of years. I'm like, people are just create putting a letters on a computer and selling blips. There, there's just no real technology. So all the Wild. scams are going to be are, are going to be shaken up. And that's, I think, also going to support Bitcoin, because remember, I used to say Bitcoin is kind of like the dollar index as it rises and falls. The others ebb and flow together. Well, now yeah. we know that 99.9% of all cryptocurrencies out there are fugazis. They're not real. Yeah. There's no technology behind it. It's nothing but smoke and mirrors. That is going to come to roost. And I think that the people who do have stuff in those currencies, as they're dumping it, they're going to put it into Bitcoin because Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Monero are the only ones that, one, are real technologies, not necessarily in use, but they're, I mean, Ethereum is to some degree, and Monero yes. definitely is. You know, and Bitcoin is the first. So those three, I think, will hold value. The rest, forget about it. And that's where Teddy, the Teddy, I appreciate it. I appreciate the wrap up, man. I wish you a happy new Rock. year. And we'll talk you to you too. in 2023, man. Sounds good. Take care. Okay. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next.